Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It's Saturday, March 30th, and we are here answering your financial questions. If you have one, just go to our website, jillonmoney.com. Click the Contact Us button and write your note. If you'd like to join us on the air live, be sure to check the box. Mark will do everything else. Also, while you're on the website, don't forget to sign up for the free weekly newsletter. It comes out every Friday. A good way to start your weekend. And you can also subscribe to our service, Jill on Money Live. That's our access to quarterly live webinars and more special bonus video content. We got a bunch of interviews that we've scheduled, so you'll have to check it out and fork over 35 bucks for just one year. It's probably the cheapest subscription you have out there. So check it out. Okay, today we are going to talk to Mike from Buffalo. I just recently retired from the uh, fire department. I did 28 years. I retired uh, fairly young. I'm single. I don't have any kids. Uh, My house is paid up. I really don't have a lot of bills. I don't live above my means. I don't try to keep up with the Joneses. I live very modestly. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just want to make sure that my future is appropriately secured. I'm 51 mm-hmm. and I really, you know, I could be here another 20, 30, 40 years. And I just want to make sure that I'm going to be secured in the uh, years to come. Tell me about the pension you receive after being um, a firefighter for 28 years. Well, uh, I retired last year. Presently, I get uh, I receive a New York State pension. My mm-hmm. pension is uh, seventy five hundred and fifty bucks a month. After taxes, I bring home about six thousand dollars, a little bit more than that. I have a small, very modest uh, pension from the military. Mm-hmm. That's uh, three hundred dollars. I have a per diem job. I mm-hmm. only work when I want to work, so that's that's nice. And I only make maybe ten grand there a year. Okay, uh, but it just keeps me busy. I don't yeah. work that much. Presently. I have uh, 35000 in cash. My household bills are about 700 a month. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I usually have probably another seven, eight, nine hundred dollars $900 just for spending gas and things like that and entertainment. Mm-hmm. I have a small car payment of mm-hmm. only 340 bucks a month. When's that up? Uh, I have another three years left. Okay. That's fine. And then I have an RV payment of two thirty a month, and then uh, I maintain a two thousand dollar visa bill because I I want to maintain credit because when you don't have credit, that's when your credit score goes down. Just mm-hmm. in case, in the future, you never know. So when you say a two thousand dollar bill, explain yeah. that to me. You mean you're running two thousand dollars a month, and you're paying it off every month, or you're carrying? Oh, no, forward? no, I, I pay it. I, I pay probably double the payment, but I just like keeping some kind of balance on my visa just to maintain credit scores. But what you're saying, I want to make sure I really understand this. Okay. I don't mean to be a dope. $2,000. Are you saying you're, you're actually carrying forward a payment or it gets zeroed out every month? No, I carry, I carry forward. I pay. Okay. Okay, Hold on. Hold on. Let me just stop you right there. Sure. You don't need to do that. Credit is not established in that way. Credit is established based on the timeliness of your paying off that debt and carrying it forward will not help your credit score. You Uh, probably have a perfect credit score, but you don't need to, you do not need to worry about that. So let's pay that off completely. We're done. Don't need to do that. So no more credit card bill. I'm I'm Xing that out and I'm saying you have $33,000 in cash now. Okay. That would be fine. Okay. Now, my other question is, so $1,600 a month is like sort of your standard spending. On top of that, though, there's like, let's call it another $600 a month between the RV and the car, right? Yeah. Okay, good. And is that it? Would you say like those are the basic bills? Okay, great. That's it. You're a net saver is what you're telling me, right? Yeah. Because essentially, if I look at this, if you have pension money of six grand a month, and you're only spending twenty two. Let's even say twenty five hundred dollars a month. You should be net net saving money every month. Yes, I do. Okay, great. Now, through New York State pension, does that also come with your health insurance? Yes, I get free health insurance for the rest of my life. As you should, as a firefighter. Thank you. Uh, it's amazing. What else do we need to know about you? How about did you save money in a deferred compensation plan? Yes, I I presently have two hundred thousand. In a 457 plan. Okay. And then I have 275000 in a structured capital strategy 16B. And they've been 
doing very well for me. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately with the 457, I can't contribute anymore, but they've done very, very well. And I I, I really can't complain about them not doing well. They've done fantastic for me. Okay. But wait a second, just so I understand this, you have an IRA. This is in an I or what is, this is an annuity is what I'm hearing from you. Okay. So this is an annuity. What I want to understand is, is this in an IRA or is this in an old uh, 403B? No, this is an IRA. So you have an IRA, and where is that IRA held? Uh, it's AXA. Okay, so it's AXA Financial, which is a big insurance company. Yeah. All right, so you have, I think, a variable annuity. When did you do that? A year ago when you retired? Yeah, what I did is I took some of my deferred comp, and yep. I rolled it over into the uh, structured uh, capital. I got strategy. you. Okay, so here's the deal. You can't do anything with it right now because I think you're tied up for five years, essentially. Yes, that is correct. Okay. So when that is up, we probably, I would not encourage you to do that again, only because it's a high fee structure. What is in the 457 plan? How do you invest that? Uh, I have a, a mid cap, a small cap, large cap. I have a portion of it into a, a stable income fund. Okay, good. All right. Can I go big picture? Let me like go straight in for the kill here. You ready? Sure. You're in amazing shape. You're in amazing shape. Obviously, just from a cash flow perspective, having, you know, 6,000 bucks a month after tax and your health insurance is paid for and you have, you have expenses, which I mean, I'm going to even inflate it. Let's say it was $3,000 a month because you start saying like, I want to take a really nice vacation every year. You're net saver. Fantastic. Your to-do list is very short. So number one is that, you know, I guess like how much is the car loan and how much is the RV loan? Uh, The RV loan, I just uh, got the new RV this year. So Mm -hmm. I think my RV loan is, I think it's like Mm 12,000 and I have, I think 15,000 left on my truck. You know what I would say? You know that extra cash flow that's coming in, that $3,000 difference? What I would do is, forgetting about putting, because you said something interesting. You're like, oh, I can't put more money in my 457 plan. Right. What I would do is I would accelerate paying down the car loan and the RV loan. And then once you have that, now my big question to you is, um, with that extra cash, tell me what you want to do with that cash. Do you want to start a non-retirement saving investment account? Do you want to do, do you want to pile up more cash because it makes you feel better? What's your hope for that money? It's funny that you ask me what I want to do in the future with my money. My question is, is you, you said that you wouldn't want me to do that again in the five years for the structured capital. If I don't do that, what could I do with that Let's say at the end of the five years, I have 350000 or whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah. What are you going to do with that? Once that IRA, the structured note is up in five years, the reason why I want you to get out of it is that it's an expensive way to invest. Now, if you want to stay with the advisor, who's probably not really an advisor, is probably just an insurance salesperson. Yeah, he's actually a fireman uh, that I work with. Oh, yeah. So you f- think about this. Your brother just hosed you on this product. <laughs> <laughs> so in case you, if you'd like to, I mean, I've had this with people who are like, you mean my brother-in-law hosed me? I'm like, yeah. Well, that's that's that. Yeah. Okay. So here's the thing. It's not terrible. It doesn't really matter because you're in such good financial shape, but it's a more expensive way to invest. And so ideally, at some point, maybe in five years, you take the 457 plan, you take the IRA, and we're going to combine them into one account. You're basically going to have one retirement account, one IRA account, okay? There's going to be a half a million dollars in that. And then we have to decide what you want to do with that account. If you want that account managed for you, you could just go to Fidelity and say like, I want to open up an account here and I want to use like your fun little thing, you know, uh, Fidelity service. I think it's Fidelity Go and it'll be invested for you for a very, very cheap amount of money. Like you're probably paying 3% for that structured note. The Fidelity service is like 0.25%. So what I think you should do is at the end of that period, and we'll stay in touch. You'll stay. I'll be around in five years and four well, years. Don't worry. So you well, would, what you would want to do is you would want to combine it into one account. You have one investment purpose, which is, hey, I want to have 
some upside, a limited downside. I'm probably not going to spend this money. You're going to invest it very cheaply with index funds or let do it use what's called a robo advisor, a robotic. Uh, it's basically like an algorithm to help manage your money and call it a day and not spend the money with your buddy who is, you know, collected a commission for selling you a product. You don't need that product. If I take that at the end of the five years, can I put that back into the 457? I think you may be able to. That's interesting. Without having a tax burden. Yeah. Well, first of all, there's one of two things that can happen. Either you can roll it back in the 457 and all the money can be there. Or you can actually just create one new IRA rollover account where the 457 money goes and this money goes. Okay. So it can all be combined. But you'll have to find out because... The the money that is w- went into that structured note, did it come from the 457 or a 403B? 457. I think you can roll it right back in, and which would be ideal. And then you're like, boom, done. Keep it there. If you would like to join us, all you need to do is go to the website, jillonmoney.com, and click the Contact Us button. Don't forget to let us know if there are some cool topics you want us to cover, or maybe you've got a resource to share with the community. We always love that as well. You can subscribe to this podcast on the Odyssey app or wherever you find your favorite podcast. Please leave us a rating and review wherever you listen. Lift someone up, change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thank you for listening, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow.